Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have the exact same problem twice because we're going to solve it in two different ways. On the right side, we're going to solve for y. On the left side, we're going to solve it for b. You'll find out that the approach is pretty well the same no matter which variable you solve for, and that will become evident when we solve these two problems. Okay, on the right side, we're going to start with the right side. We want to solve that for y, but there's a fraction there, or there's two fractions. We want to get rid of the fractions. We do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which in this case will be the product of a and b, which means on the left side, I multiply this times a times b, and on the right side, I multiply that times a times b. All right. On the left side, notice when we multiply x over a times ab, the a's will cancel and end up with b times x. On the second term, notice when I multiply a times b times y over b, the b's cancel and then I end up with a times y. And on the right side, 1 times ab is simply ab. Okay, next we want to solve for y which means I want all the terms of y on the left side, all the other terms on the right side, which means bx, which does not contain a y, will have to move to the right side. That means I end up with ay is equal to ab minus bx. And the last step, since we're solving for y, we want to divide both sides of the equation by the factor of y, which is a. And so on the left side, we end up with y equals, on the right side, ab minus bx divided by a. I could potentially divide a into the two terms in the numerator, so I could also write this as y is equal to a divided by a is 1, which means b minus b over a times x. Either way is perfectly fine. That may be the preferred final answer, and that is how you do it on the first case. On the second case, we now want to solve this for b. Notice we're going to start out doing exactly the same thing, getting rid of the fractions. So I'm going to multiply both the left and the right side by a times b. Again, on the left side, the a's cancel out on the first term. I end up with b times x plus, now the b's cancel out, a times y equals a times b. But in this case, I'm solving for b. Notice I have a b here and I have a b over there. That means this b needs to go to the left and the ay needs to go to the right. So the ay moves to the right, the ab comes to the left, so this becomes b times x minus ab, because I move the ab across the equal sign, it becomes a negative, equals, and that also becomes a negative because I also cross the equal sign with the a times y. Since I have two terms on the left side that contain a b, I'm going to factor out a b, so it becomes b times x minus a, is equal to minus a times y. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the factor of b, which is x minus a, x minus a. So this becomes b is equal to minus a y divided by x minus a. You could potentially write it like this by multiplying both the top and bottom by negative. So we could write this as b is equal to a times y divided by multiplied by negative becomes a minus x, and so since it doesn't have a negative in the numerator, that is often the most preferred way to write the final answer. But notice, even though we're solving for two separate, separate variables on the right and the left, we start the problem in the exact same way, get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides by the lowest common denominator, and then we isolate the terms that contain the variable we're looking for, and so, at that point, the two methodologies diverge a little bit, but the general concept is still the same, and that is how it's done.